NASA's Orion spacecraft left the surface of Earth and soared above the surface of the moon as of early Monday. It's part of the space agency's Artemis program, which aims to send astronauts back to the moon in 2024. The Orion capsule's closest approach to the moon happened at an altitude of about 81 miles. And this is a spacecraft that began its journey, of course, to space from the state of Florida last Wednesday after delays of several weeks. For more, let's bring in CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. Bill, we said delays of several weeks, but you could say delays of 50 years. Uh, what is the significance of going back to the moon and doing it in the way that NASA is doing it? Well, you know, NASA views the Artemis program, that's, that's the new moon program, as a stepping stone to eventual flights to Mars. And the idea is to test the technology, the equipment, the procedures, you know, the medical, the life support uh, techniques that you'll need before sending astronauts on years-long missions to and from the Red Planet. So in the near term, they want to mount a sustained exploration of the moon. They want to see if they can even mine ice so they can get water and air and rocket fuel from the surface of the moon to lower the cost of spaceflight. Uh, it's really quite a, quite a full plate for them if they can make it work. And this is a first step in that direction. And Bill, what comes next? What's the next part of Orion's mission? Uh, what needs to happen before people can be orbiting the moon now that this flyby is complete? Well, the flyby is just really step two. You know, step one was launching it from the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, the flyby we just had uh, will send the, the Orion spacecraft out toward a distant orbit. They call it a distant retrograde orbit. It's going to uh, put the spacecraft in an orbit that's about 40,000 miles above the lunar surface. It's a very stable orbit, and they're going to spend about a week really wringing out the systems, you know, the propulsion, navigation, life support, all of those systems, make sure they're working well, and then there'll be another flyby a little bit later to send them back to Earth. Uh, if all goes well, they'll splash down in the Pacific Ocean on December the 11th. So they've got a, a whole battery of tests, a slew of tests they're going to try to carry out between now and then, and if all of that goes well, that's what sets the stage for the first flight with astronauts on board in 2024 or thereabouts. 2024 or thereabouts. And then how soon after the uh, deep moon exploration could that uh, final or additional stage of the mission, the Mars journey, begin? <laughs> well, you know, Mars is one of these aspirational goals. They call it a horizon goal, meaning it is way out there. That, you know, sending astronauts to Mars is going to require budgets uh, that depend on multiple administrations, multiple congresses. So it really is more aspirational than anything concrete. It's, it's the moon is the target in the near term, and at least for the next decade, uh, to try to work out these systems and procedures before you can really even seriously think about going to Mars. Well, there's a moon shot, then there's a Mars shot. That's, yeah. that's the horizon goal. I'm, we I'm should all have them. It. People say, why <laughs> do it? Well, because we're human. This is what we do. Bill Harwood, thank you very much.